But now I turn back to the proposition and Mr. Yanis Varoufakis, who already referenced. Yanis is a Greek economist, an academic, and a former member of the Hellenic Parliament who served as Greek finance minister from January to July 2015 before his resignation. He led negotiations with, the, with Troika during the Greek government debt crisis and is also a regular commentator and analyst on news television. Yanis. First, we indebt ourselves. Then, we indebt the foreigners. And lastly, we indebt our children. Remember that line by David Hume from his treatise on money? He was completely right. And as the former finance minister of a state and of a nation devastated by debt, unsustainable debt, I think I have uh, the uh, capacity to put this position forward. The idea that parsimony is a virtue and profligacy is a sin is one that I am prepared to embrace enthusiastically. The problem with austerity is that it is absolutely unrelated to the notion of parsimony. It is intellectually weak if not a totally bankrupt idea, macroeconomically dangerous, and morally highly problematic. What is austerity? Let's begin by defining it so that we have the same kind of understanding of what we're talking about. Austerity is the idea that during the bad times, you cut government budget deficits, you create surpluses in order to contain the growth of your debt to GDP ratio. That is what austerity is about. That has never worked in the history of capitalism, and it will never work in the history of capitalism. And the, way, the reason why Joseph Osborne stopped doing it was because it was not working. And the reason why he was not catastrophic was because he understood that his own policy of austerity uh, was one that deserved to be confined to the dustbin of history where it deserves to be. Allow me to say that there are two basic misconceptions about austerity. The first one is that it is the natural response to an orgy of government spending on the social welfare state. In this country, forget Greece for a moment. Well, just forget Greece. <laughs> but in this country, there was an orgy of government spending. But it happened in 2008 in support of the city of London and to provide asset insurance for those who already have everything. If you look at the actual result of this spending spree, politically it was essential for a conservative government to press the Lib Dems to accepting a Faustian bargain whereby after this orgy of spending there would be cutbacks on those who had nothing to do with the causes of the crisis, on the unsuspecting victims of it. And what was the result? The government reduced the structural deficit of uh, the United Kingdom, spending, let's say, by about 6%. And what happened to debt to GDP? It increased by 19%. And this is not a British exceptionalism kind of scenario. This is what happens everywhere. In every country in Europe where austerity was practiced, the debt to GDP ratio ballooned. It does, doesn't work. Let me just give you just a simple arithmetic example. It's not rocket science. Take a nation whose debt to GDP ratio is 80%. 80%, which is more or less what it was here. And then imagine that the state uh, budget is about 40% of GDP. Again, more or less the number that applies, pertains to the United Kingdom. Yeah. And imagine that we have a, an enthusiastic Australian government that reduces government spending by a half. It goes from 40% of GDP to 20% of GDP. What will happen is, immediately, just because the belt tightening metaphor is really irrelevant in the case of the state. I believe in belt tightening. I do try to lose weight and tighten my belt. But the reason why belt tightening works for a corner store, for um, Marks and Spencers, for a household, is because of this splendid independence between income and expenditure. If tonight you do not go to the pub to drink a pint of beer, you have saved that money. And your income has not 
been reduced as a result. This splendid independence of your income from your expenditure, which allows you to tighten your belt. But the nation's total expenditure is the nation's total income. So when the government cuts spending by 20% of GDP, GDP is cut by 20%. So your debt to, be, to the GDP ratio goes from four fifths, 80%, to 100% immediately just because you have practiced austerity. The question is, why is austerity, if it is such a dumb idea and such a dangerous idea, which it is, why is it so popular? The reason has to do with the fact that the liberal bourgeois tradition is wholly and totally in an existentialist crisis, at least for the last 100 years or 200 years, let's say. Let me put it this way. The liberal democratic state is insurance, asset insurance for the rich. And the rich are skimping on the premium. The rich want a powerful state to preserve their property and their assets, but they are worried that a state that has the capacity and the power to, re to preserve their property rights is also a state that can confiscate them. And at the same time, they don't want to pay for it. And the result is debt. And well, I'm in the la my last 50 seconds, they are protected. <laughs> are they not? So let me wrap it up. Austerity is a bad idea. Oh, George Osborne knows that. He was not just discredited because of his silly position and his scaremongering on the Brexit referendum. He was discredited because every time he set a target for a surplus, he missed it. The public sector borrowing requirement increased. Every time he thinks he cut back, the next year the public sector borrowing requirement increased again. So what do we need to do? It's very simple. We need an investment bank, a public investment bank, at an arm's length from government, which is supported through quantitative easing by the Bank of England, in order to fund directly, on banking principles without political interference, all the shovel-ready projects that are absolutely essential and ready. Thank you. Thank you so much, Yanis, for that fine speech.